In this video, we will look at graphs of absolute value functions. You will find this on page 370 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Graphs of absolute value or the modulus functions. The graph of the absolute value function fx equals the bars around x is similar to the graph of y equals x. Okay, except that the negative half of the graph, the part that would have been there, is reflected in the x-axis. This is because taking absolute value of a negative number makes it positive. So that becomes positive. That becomes positive. Okay. Therefore, when constructing a table, it's important to include negative x values inside the absolute value in order not to be misled as that what the graph looks like. Graphs of linear absolute value functions always result in a V shape. Okay, more or less like that. That's the standard one. So the standard form of an absolute value function, this, is this. The variables a, h, and k, a, h, and k, tell you different things about the graph. To illustrate this, study the examples in the table below. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm also going to bring chapter 3. Can you remember chapter 3? I want to bring that transformation of graphs. Because it's not like just working for one like this and the other one like this. So it's general things. And as I said in chapter 3, although this is not in the syllabus, it's going to help you in other chapters. So I'm going to reflect. You can look at in the summary of chapter 3. I did that. Okay, so let's start. This is the normal one. The vertex is 0, 0. And the gradient is 1 on the right side. And m is negative 1 on the left side. So positive 1, negative 1. Now I start working with that. What happens if I put a 3 in front? It's almost the same as what I did there. Can you remember? So if I was looking at this, and I want to take you first back to this. So if that value was bigger than 1, then it was doing this. Do you see? It basically stretched in the y direction. So it becomes longer here. And if it was between 0 and 1, then it was compressing, it, it becomes smaller. So let's see what's the effect on this one. If it was 3, bigger than 1, the vertex and the gradient is now 3. So it's almost like it's becoming steeper. Do, do you see? And then, so it's positive, negative on the left side of the vertex. The bigger the value of A, the steeper the gradient of the line. Okay, so it's almost like it's moving in the legs. Now what happens, look here, if it's a third, if it's almost like this, then it's becoming flatter. Okay, so the vertex and the gradient is a third. The side of this, uh, the smaller the value of A, the less steeper the gradient of the line. So it's becoming, it's almost like it's compressing. And there it's like stretch, stretching in the y direction. So you can keep this in mind. Let's go on. Okay, so what happens if there's a negative? Now, let's go back to our basic thing. What happens if it's a negative? If it's a reflection in the x-axis. So, in the x-axis. So, if this graph was like this, then it's a reflection in the x-axis. So, <clears throat> maximums, a silent point vertigating to A to a negative has changed the V-shape opening upwards to opening downwards. Uh, okay, the width of the graph where it opens upwards or downwards is negative. So that's the reflection, just like this, in the x-axis. Okay, and now again I'm bringing in chapter 3 the summary. So, if I'm looking, and there's the page where you can find it. If I'm putting something in the bracket, now can you remember, I'm first going to compare it. What happens if something was added inside the bracket? Then it was a translation to the left or right. Can you remember, if it was, say, positive 1, no, not in that direction, then it was in this direction. And if it was negative 1, then it was to the right in that direction. Okay, so basically, 
If I put that negative 2, so negative 2 will be, so it's the original one and it moves in the right direction. Okay, and if it was positive, it would have moved towards the left. So exactly the same principle that we explained there. And now, what happens if it was not inside the bracket, but on its own? Okay, exactly again the same. Now, if it's positive, it moves up, down. Up, upwards and if it's negative it moves downwards and that's exactly what so don't think this basic rules and this is why I was including it in the book it, it's going to work with absolute values but it's also going to work when I come to uh, trigonometry graphs I'm also going to bring this in and this is the reason I was putting it in the book okay so this is just a very good idea to have in your mind um, and you can work with this, but I also show you algebraic method. So if it was in this case plus three, so okay, first, if it's negative one, it was moving one direction there. Okay, two, so the gradients became steeper. Do you see? And plus three, it was moving up. So I, I can still use this principle. So it's always good to know this basic, but I'm also going to show you a nice algebraic method. And that is the table method. Uh, you should try to use the rules shown in the previous table, but if you want to check the graph, create a table to make sure you are on the right track. So I'm first going to show you the table method, but then afterwards I will also show you, um, after the table method, I will also show you how to do it on algebra. Okay. So in this case, this is going to be, so I can already know it's a reflection in the x-axis. I know it's moving to the left. But if I want to, I can just work it out and I can just plot my points. Okay. And then I can compare it with that. Now, because I prefer that you you'd rather use the algebra method than the table, I'm not going to give you too many to do. I think if we just keep to the one, I think that's going to be fine. Okay. So I think number 2B. Let's do 2B with a table. So stop the video and do number 2B with a table. Okay. Now I think it will be good, before I decide on the table, that I cheat a little bit and I think for myself just a rough sketch, thinking of all that previous information. Okay, so if I look at this information, so it's plus 2, and okay, it's moving up, it's going to, oh no, it's going to move down, it's not a reflection, and it's going to be plus 2, so I think more or less, if I must now think, I think it's, it's going to be, I don't say, uh, plus 2, luckily there's nothing in front, so uh, something like that. So I think... If I was using a little bit of a table here, I could have said, and I've wanted to do it with a table. Okay. Okay, so I think, because I want year, and what is that value, so oh, it's not going to be, so say I take negative 8, yes, it can be a bit long, because according to me, according to me, that point is definitely going to be there at negative uh, 1, and, and this is going to be plus 2, so it, it looks like 2 and 1, negative 2, negative 2 and negative 1. I think if I make uh, negative 4, I think negative 4 will be alright. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, uh, negative 1, 0. Uh, if I, say, I think this will be alright. Now I just substitute it in. Remember I'm doing 2b. So if I substitute Okay, and if I'm going to put in the place of x, negative 4 plus 2, now I just have to calculate it. 
So it's going to be negative 2 minus 1. So it's going to be 2 minus 1. And 2 minus 1 is just going to be 1. And then, and I'm going to do a little bit of my cheating work. Just you do it with a pencil every time. Now I'm going to just put here negative 3. Okay. And my answer will also differ. Okay, so this is going to be negative 3, so it's negative 1, so it's going to be 1 minus 1, and that's going to be 0. And then I'm going to put a negative 2, and that is going to be 0, and that's going to be negative 1. And if I put negative 1, Uh, negative 1, then it's going to be 1 minus 1 is the same, and that's 0. And if I put that 0, then it's going to be 2 minus 1, and it's going to be 1. Okay, I'm just going to get my grid. And if I draw my line, then, and I'll see if my estimation was more or less correct. Just see if I just take, oh, sorry, take a ruler. Okay, so let's just plot that. So it's negative four, one, two, three, four, and one. And negative three and zero. A negative 2, a negative 1. A negative 1, and oh, negative 2, a negative 1. Negative 1 and 0, and 0 and 1. And if I then draw the lines, okay, did it make it very big? I think if I was extending it, extending it, it would have been a little bit bigger. But for now, I think it's all right, and I just name it, and I say y is equal to x plus 2 minus 1. But do you see, my, my, my estimation was more or less correct. I could have just made it longer. Okay, in the next video, I'll show you with algebra.